Hello fellow animator! Are you using video editing software during the production of your animated films? If not, you really should consider doing so. Because for a film production, video editing software is like... The central station! The home base! The headquarters! Ground control! You get it, something very important and central to your production. So stick with me and I will tell you four things that are great to do in video editing software. So the four things we'll be talking about are 1. Making an animatic and a video editing software 2. Using this animatic to work on a shot-by-shot -shot basis during the entire production of your animated film 3. Having a constantly updated version of your film ready to watch and 4. Congratulations, you're already in the right software to export your film to all the distribution formats. Let's have a look at all those things in detail. Reason number one, the animatic. If you follow more or less the usual approach of making an animated film, uh, at one point you will make a storyboard and you will need to put this storyboard into motion to have a preview of your film and to judge timing and um, that's a great base to plan all the further steps in your animation production. And video editing software works great for that. I'm working in Premiere, but this is basically the same in every video editing software. They all work similar. You have, you know, a media editor where you can dra drag in, in this case, your, uh, your storyboard pictures. And, uh, you know, you can grab them, make them longer and shorter. And um, the way I like to do this is I, I play it until I feel like this is the moment where I need to see the next picture, stop it, and yeah, just drag the next uh, picture over it um, and yeah depending on on what you're doing in your animation you you will already have some more poses you know you will not just have a, a picture representing a shot but already you know you have different characters talking in the same shot and in this case I have a car approaching with our two heroes um, yeah and I can basically feel out how long I think uh, the pictures have to stand and this way find the timing of my animation without having animated anything. Obviously if you have a dialogue driven project uh, you need to have a temp voice track in order to time your animatic. Um, here you can see what it looks like in this case. Quick! Someone's illegally parking in a handicapped spot! And why I like to use video editing software instead of animation software. I think uh, in most animation softwares it gets really messy, especially if you're starting to have a lot of layers. And you know, then you shift anything and some layers shift and other layers don't shift. And then uh, when you try to do a little bit of sound editing, most animation softwares just don't do that very well. If I, uh, in Premiere, for example, realized that I recorded a dialogue line too slow, I was speaking too slow, um, it already has some basic effects like the speed and duration and I can speed it up a little. Here you hear that snippet that we just had with uh, some temporary sound effects. Quick! Someone's illegally parking in a handicapped spot! Now the reason why you do all this effort is that you have a final timing, a more or less precise representation of your final film. And this helps you for your entire production later on. Uh, it's vital for music and for, for sound design because your musicians and sound designers usually start working on your film parallel to you animating. If you just animate how you feel it, you know, you, you might think on oh, one day it would be a good idea to make this shot two seconds longer and then the next day you would change it uh, to be one second shorter again. And an animatic helps you to avoid this. It helps you to commit to a timing, to commit to a length and you can make X sheets from that, your musicians can start working on it. You know in your animation what needs to happen, when and how long your shots are. 
Which leads us to our second point. You can work on a shot by shot base. If you have your animatic done, and if you're content with the timing, as we talked about, you think this could be a final timing, this could really work, then you could go and, um, and see where your, sh where, where your cuts are. This one is shot 10, the one with the car. We group that. And this one is shot 11, where they are talking. You can export your film shot by shot and have that as a basis for your animation software. And uh, we know exactly, you know, when the post changes happen. We know how long the shot is because we have timed it in the animatic. It says 7 seconds and 13 frames. And working shot by shot has many advantages. You know, the alternative would be to have your whole film in your animation software. My friend JK, who writes the uh, Animator Island articles with me, he gave me a flash file from his web series, Fred the Monkey. You should really check it out on fredthemonkey.com. And he, for a long time, worked in the same timeline for the entire production of a movie in flash. Here we have one shot with Fred, and when it cuts uh, to Space Chicken, it actually, um, all the drawings jump, you know, you still have all the layers, but you know, Fred is obviously over here and Space Chicken is on the layers over here and Fred's layers are getting deleted as the cut happens. Um, of course, this leads to an insane amount of layers. Even if you name them all correctly, you still run into troubles not finding uh, certain things. Also, um, in Flash, if you have a long Flash file, you get problems with the audio sync. And just imagine you want to retime a shot, you want to add some, some more frames here, you would have like to select everything and shift everything further. It's not very professional and it has a few downsides to it. First of all, if you have everything in one file, if something happens to that one file, you might uh, lose your entire film. Also, you can't collaborate with other animators because everything is in that one file and as soon one person uh, has this thing open, it's usually blocked and nobody else can work on it. And I understand the main reason why a person would uh, try to have the whole film in one animation file because they feel like they can judge it better. They can see how it comes together, they just need to hit play and they can see their final film. But this is nothing that you want to have in your animation software, but something you can have in your video editing software, which brings us to reason three. Reason three, you can update your project file that you made for the animatic uh, over the entire course of your production to always reflect the current state of your film. Now what that means is you have those shot files and you know every time you made some progress in uh, an animation file you can export a play blast or a preview and uh, you could always save that to the same location. You could even always give it the same name. The advantage that this has is that um, video editing software they don't really import stuff they are only referencing files. If I have a file, for example, that's called uh, shot to preview, like this one, you know, you can see it's the, it's the current state of my, my shot. Uh, it already got some poses and breakdowns there. It's uh, a little more than an animatic already. Let's say if I go into the next fi uh, phase and do the uh, cleanup drawings, then I could overwrite this file and it would automatically replace it in my animatic. Um, yeah, that's no longer an animatic, but it always represents the current state of your film. And one glorious day, you are done and you can drag in the final export and you will see it fits perfectly over this. You can just replace the last version that you have and there you have the final animation and you can just export your entire film and you're done. The good thing is that when you constantly update your film, you not only have something to show to your team or to yourself to see that you're making progress, um, you also can see if everything is working together. If there are maybe some cuts that don't work anymore in the final animation and then you can react as early as possible and make the adjustments, the necessary adjustments, as early as possible. And for last but not least, uh, if you're really in the position to now have the final 
a film in your timeline, you are already in the perfect software to export your films to all the distribution formats that you need. You know, from here you can make the file that you burn on DVDs, you can make the file for YouTube, you can make the file for Blu-rays, and the exports in your animation software are usually only meant for either giving you quick previews or for giving you a very, very high quality picture that you can then work in other software with. And don't worry if you are a little overwhelmed by those export uh, settings and you don't know what you need to put there. We have a really great video next time about video formats. But let's wrap this up for now. Please let us know if you are already using a video editing software. If yes, which one? Do you have any tips and tricks to share or maybe some reasons to use video editing software that I didn't list? Please let us know in the comments below. Please like, share and subscribe. This was Ferdinand Engländer for Animator Island. Take care and goodbye. Third. <laughs> what was the third one?